Hello. Good morning, everyone. So we'll be starting the session in five minutes. Hello. Yeah. So let's start. I hope everyone to confirm the audio through the chat option. Yeah. Thank you. So we got one confirmation. It's been loud and clear. Yeah. So we got another confirmation. OK. So let's go back to the uh, last event details. Uh, my name is Robin. I'll be delivering this uh, session today. So last sessions or last event, we had a uh, discussion about uh, understanding a cloud computing, how cloud computing is been uh, defined and what are the models we have. And today we'll be discussing about a different topic. So when we had a discussion about cloud computing, a couple of points we have learned. The first point we have learned, it's about the different modes of the infrastructure. See, we understood like the cloud in the IT infrastructure has been currently it's been configured or it's been available. It's been a two mode. The first mode was it's about called on prem. The second mode was it's known as a collocation. Then we had a discussion. It's like how this can be migrated or it's been moved to a cloud infrastructure. So typically the movement it's known as a lift and shift or a re-hosting. This is the technical terminologies generally we are using, like if you want to migrate from on-premises or into a colo into a Microsoft Cloud. Then we had a comparison of uh, on-premises also, like how on-premises IT infrastructure has been configured. We understood like it's been like in on-premises IT infrastructure, all the assets or the, all the equipments, all the infrastructure, is been owned by us. So the capex or the implementation part, it's been handled by us. In a collocation one, for the power and the cooling facility, we are connecting with a different vendor. With the help of that, we are providing a facility. That's known as a collocation. Then we had a discussion about a cloud also, like what is a cloud computing? So we understood like NIST is the organization, is beautifully is explained how cloud is been defined. So we understood like it's been uh, configured or it's been available with the five characters and this can be deployed in a three service model and three uh, deployment model also. We understood what is the difference between ISAS, PaaS and SaaS. Then we had a, a, a discussion about the public cloud, hybrid cloud and uh, hybrid cloud also. So public, private and hybrid cloud model. Today we are discussing about a different topic. Right now we understood the definition of a cloud computing and we understood the difference also. Now today we are moving to Microsoft Azure. How Azure can be used for uh, uh, in our IT infrastructure? How the existing IT infrastructure can be migrated to the cloud infrastructure? So the all discussion is about how the Azure can be used or what are the features or services are supported on the Microsoft Azure side. So let's move to the first portion. It's like how to create an account. Now all of us maybe is using a different platform uh, in your daily life, right? I'm just giving an example like uh, if you want to use watch uh, movies, we used to use a OTT platform called Amazon Prime Video, right? 
or you may be familiar with another product called netflix right you may be using netflix or a prime video kind of application what is the purpose of this the purpose it's like you if you want to watch movies or it's been like a, uh, serials or it's been like tv shows with the help of this tool you can watch it so let me put a question to you if i need to use a prime video or a netflix how generally it's been now uh, using what are the requirements you have like if i want to watch in a movie in a amazon prime video how how can i do that can you just post it on a comment if i want to watch some movies on a amazon prime video how can i do that can you just comment it on the chat window i'm just giving a scenario it's like think like you want to watch a movie in a amazon prime video can i just simply log in and watch it or it's like is there any other uh, preliminary requests we have yeah we got an answer like we need to apply for a subscription and uh, we need a internet connection also okay uh, any other answer from anyone i'm waiting for the reply from uh, all the members so let's make this uh, event this a uh, interactive one so request everyone to post the comment it on the chat window need an account and uh, subscription consuming service okay let's take a view from all the members here so let's participate in the exercise app is to be installed on the mobile or okay good that's a different thought yes so all of us is came with a Uh, some kind of a conclusion here if we need to use a amazon prime or any of this ott videos it's mandatory that we need to have an account so this account generally you will be registering with your gmail id or a personal email id and with the help of that you are able to log in to that once the account it's been uh, created uh, if you try to watch some movies or a tv show Uh, you may be watched for a 5 minutes or a 3 minutes right the trailer versions or is like uh, some uh, intro sessions or intro videos only you will be able to watch it right in case if i want to watch the complete movie you may be getting an option like hey you need to go for a concept called subscription right it's called subscription is mandatory what is the use of a subscription typically this is been connecting with your concept called billing right if you want to use uh, uh, any billing or if you want to use uh, uh, any kind of the resource on the uh, netflix or amazon video so you need to have a, some kind of a plan like 3 months or a 6 months or one year or lifelong whatever plans you available from that vendor we need to subscribe that similar way here also right now we understood like cloud or a microsoft azure is a csp what generally it's been doing it's giving resource for rent that means if i am a user and if i am looking for a uh, sql server or a virtual machine or a firewall or a network components with the help of a microsoft azure portal i will be able to create that now end of the month or end of the year i need to pay money to csp that's means to microsoft azure based on the consumption we are using this is similar like your uh, uber or a ola right you may be using a uber is the taxi service maybe in your country right if i need to go to from one source to another destination we'll be using with the help of a uh, uber app and after that you will be able to uh, uh, 
pay that amount right based on the consumption you're or using or based on the usage we are doing right So it's, yeah, uh, I just reconnected my headset. That the reason it was when in a not audible mode. So if you're using a Uber or a Ola or a Amazon Prime or it's any of this application, if I need to use that, we understood we need to have a account in place. Second one, it's like a, for a billing purpose, you need to have a subscription also. So based on the subscription and based on the account, we are in a position to use that particular application. Similar way when it is coming to the IT infrastructure and Microsoft Azure also. Azure has been providing 100 plus services. So if you are taking Microsoft Azure, it's providing 100 plus services. This include your compute resource, it's include the storage device, it's include uh, uh, other components like uh, storage or a firewall or a network compute, compute everything, right? So with the help of that, you will be able to use Microsoft Azure, but the problem here is like end of the month, we need to give money to or it's to Microsoft based on the consumption. Now in this session, I'm trying to cover or I'm trying to discuss something about the account creation and a subscription also. Now, if I'm a user, if I need to use a Microsoft Azure, what are the options we have? Uh, maybe many of these members in this group may be already having an account available from your office. Maybe you, you already may be using that account. But when you're going for any kind of a research or any kind of a, a study, I prefer you to go for some kind of a uh, lab account or a free account. Because if you're making any mistake on an organization subscription, that may be going to affect the entire organization infrastructure. So in this session, we are trying to understand or we are trying to discuss something about the creation of the free account. Now, let me share the presentation. Give me a second. Yes. So let me share it. I hope you can see the screen now. So let's start with the Azure, then uh, let's move to the creation of um, Azure. Now, when it is coming to the Microsoft Azure side, already we understood it's like Microsoft Azure is the cloud product from Microsoft. So this Microsoft implementation or Microsoft discussion has been started from a long back, like. Uh, 2008 the Microsoft professional developer conference Microsoft has been announced they are coming with a cloud technology so the project initially they started with a code name called project red dog and in 2010 Microsoft has been released the first version of the Microsoft Azure or the cloud product and later on in the 2014 they been name, renamed in Microsoft Azure so this was the history of uh, Microsoft Azure so we are not going to discuss about that now these are the some information about uh, uh, some of the key resource or a key leaders involved in the microsoft azure now you may be heard or you may be read about uh, um, um dev uh, dev is one of the uh, developer or is one of the leading member in the microsoft uh, uh, platform 
like uh, you may be already aware that dev is mean uh, it's a software engineer you may be heard his name like uh, when you worked on a windows nt so he is the person who's been worked on uh, windows nt and uh, he's been uh, part of this microsoft azure service platform it's been uh, uh, is one of the key member uh, for the microsoft azure now mark is the uh, cto for the azure uh, he was a co founder for the uh, win internals so you may be uh, heard about this company and uh, i remember in 2006 uh, they have been acquired this uh, firm so he was an author in microsoft technet magazine also i'm not sure like how many of uh, you have read or it's mean uh, uh, heard about this magazine called technet magazine uh, so previously i remember like the magazine name was is called windows nt magazine so mark is one of the core author or it's one of the regular contributor in that magazine now uh, he is the person is involved in uh, or is the person is a uh, 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 was part of uh, implementing a lot of windows nt or uh, uh, kernel load programs or ntfs files on the dos everything so he's one of the key member in the microsoft team uh, right now he's been handling the cto role for the microsoft azure now scott you may be it's uh, uh, um, always you may be seen on the microsoft event always wearing a red shirt and uh, uh, red t-shirt it's you can able to see it's been always if or any almost all the microsoft major conference uh, is frequently present with wearing a signature red sheet. So right now he's been handling the EVP program, and uh, Gary has been part of the EVP also. So that's about the couple of uh, leads who has been involved in the Microsoft Azure. Now, people may be getting a question here: uh, What can I do with a Microsoft Azure? So Microsoft Azure has been providing hundred plus services. It's been like, uh, uh, which includes the storage or it's been the networking or it's the monitoring service or desktop as a service or a virtual desktop as a service. There are 100 plus services Microsoft has been offered. And right now you have an option for uh, working with the artificial intelligence or it can be uh, used for a machine learning or it can be used for migrating the uh, existing application to Microsoft Azure also right now you don't need to worry about this one because in the upcoming sessions we'll have a detailed discussion about uh, the common or it's been a useful uh, microsoft services is available on the azure side and we'll have a couple of a discussion about how to migrate also so right now end of this session you need to understand microsoft azure has been providing or it's been supporting almost 100 plus services and this can be used for migrating the existing application which has been currently hosted on the on-premises one and uh, artificial intelligence and big data and machine learnings all these products or the technologies also supported on the microsoft cloud one that's about a couple of the summary about this one now if you want to get a complete consolidated uh, product details you can go to the microsoft azure and azure product uh, so you can able to connect to Microsoft Azure. It's like a portal and I'm just giving a uh, You can just go to Microsoft product You can just connect to Microsoft portal Right now, this is for the cre creating a uh, free account only. So let's go to products. Uh, if you connect to Microsoft portal, right now when we are inside this. Right now you can able to see there's a product tab you can able to see. If you're clicking here, there is a category view you can able to see in the left side, uh, which includes uh, a compute or a container or a database or a DevOps. Based on that, you will be able to select the particular service. So based on the which area or what is the requirement of a customer or a client, you will be able to configure the particular product. So you can able to see it's like if I need to go for a compute. If you am selecting a compute, compute is coming with an N number of sub products. Like you have a batch product, you have VMware scale, you have a cloud service, 
you have a cycle cloud you have a app service and similar way you have a n number of services been support now end of the session you need to understand microsoft cloud has been supporting almost 100 plus product so based on the customer requirement you will be able to uh, configure or you will be able to implement that how to implement that's the second question now in the on premises or in the existing scenario you may be using a n number of products like in your you may be using like a, a servers or a network equipments and you have a virtual machine it's available right so this generally it's been configured inside your data center or a data room now when you're going to use a microsoft azure you are going to move or you are going to rehost all these components to microsoft azure site it's called you will be moving all this infrastructure into the microsoft cloud infrastructure so what is the advantage you are going to get here you are not going to invest anything about on the hardware front because if i'm using a microsoft if i'm using a data room or a data center if i need to use a server or it's i need to use a network equipments i need to spend or i need to put some capex cost for purchasing that but when you are moving to microsoft azure you can able to configure or you can able to provision or a decommission any servers at based on the customer requirement you don't need to wait or you don't have any kind of a dependencies available here so technically speaking you are going to pay only for what we use it's be like you love a uh, based on the consumption or based on the usage only you are going to pay to microsoft so that is the advantage which we have on a microsoft azure now people may be getting a question here how does your microsoft azure is been working what is the kind of a mode currently it's been having on in the microsoft azure side now i'm posing here in case if you have any question uh, you can comment it on the chat window or if you're good and you are comfortable we can able to move to the next slide so if you are good uh, request you to comment it's been like good and you are able to follow you can just comment it on the chat window and if you are thinking like there are some some more discussion is needed for any particular slide or any topic uh, let's post that we also on the chat window so we got a one comment it's good let's wait for a I request everyone to comment. yeah prabal i'm coming to that road it's like a fabric controller road uh, the next slide is prabal it's about the fc road and on it so till now we had a discussion is about uh, understanding this uh, azure side now let's try to understand uh, how this has been azure has been working now let me go back to the whiteboard let me take a whiteboard here you may second okay
so in the day one day one sessions we understood virtualization is one of the back end component or one of the back end resource it's been using for cloud so back end is the back end technology currently we are using in the microsoft azure it's called virtualization now if i'm a user if i'm trying to create i'm just giving a scenario on a on premises case in a on premises scenario if i need to create a vm on a microsoft or in a, any physical server just thing like we need to install windows server 2090 on a on premises server can you just come and what are the procedure or what are the step generally you will use it can you just comment it on the chat window i'm just giving a scenario you are in a customer place or you are in a data center the customer came with a requirement saying that they need to install windows server 2090 can you comment what are the step you are going to follow in a on premises one not not in the cloud okay so that's about the discussion is about the attendance on the chat window uh, so my question is about the on premises one if you want to install a windows server 2019 or thing like you want to install a windows windows 10 operating system on your laptop what are the normal procedure you will follow can anyone comment it on the chat window we need an actual installer or a boot device we need an os via bootable device installer os is needed okay good now can you can you tell me right now we few people is been commented like we need a bootable os or a bootable cd can you tell me where this operating system is installed right now i'm agree with all your points like we need a bootable device now we copied operating system on the from uh, copied the operating system from your cd now my question is like where this operating system is going and saving we got an answer like storage yes exactly the same thing right not in the bios one bios is only the intermediate between your operating system are and uh, your hardware so it's not in the bios typically if you are installing an operating system whether it's in a windows server 2019 or a windows 10 in you know, generally this is be installing inside your physical server instead instead your physical server you will have a secondary storage is been available that's called hard disk right that the reason you are getting c drive or a d drive or a e drive different partitions you are getting right generally the operating system is been available on the c drive now this old discussion is been happening around on premises or a colocation one now if you want to install an operating system in a on premises one you are installing in a physical server which is been hosted in serial on premises that has end now let's give an another example it's been like you want to install an operating system on a cloud so right now the infrastructure is been changed or the mode of support or mode of it infrastructure is been saved so in a microsoft case we understood like if you are using a cloud service provider they having a different data center across the globe right so they have a different data center it's been available across the globe it can be in us or it can be canada or it can be central india or it can be qatar or it can be north europe or it's in west europe different 
country or a, it's a different geography microsoft or the other cloud provider having a data center in a microsoft scenario if the data center is generally it's known as a technical term is called as region oh if you are creating any data center or if you are creating any uh, product on the microsoft azure portal or a, if you are using a powershell any component it's mandatory that we need to mention which data center the resource is been created now we learned one term called region region is nothing the data center it's been available from the microsoft where we can able to host the resource now i got another term called resource resource is nothing any manageable component or it component in say the microsoft azure that is generally known as a resource any manageable component it can be a vm it can be a storage it can be a firewall it can be a public ip address it can be a database it can be a network components it can be a monitoring solution so generally we can see any manageable component inside a microsoft portal or a microsoft data center generally known as a resource so region is nothing when we are creating any resource either it's in a vnet or it's called virtual machines or it's like a storage account it's mandatory that we need to mention which data center this has been created now we are discussing a term or we are discussing a topic called fc or we are discussing like how azure is been working how azure is been working on a microsoft normal way now if i am a user now just thing like robin is mean want to create some uh, uh, microsoft uh, uh, vm or some resource or something so i am a user i am connecting from india or i am connecting from north europe or us right so generally i'll be having a laptop right in the laptop i'll open a uh, microsoft different management tool now in the last session we understood if i need to use a microsoft data center we have a different management options we have right one it's been like you can use microsoft azure power shell power portal or a power shell or you have sdk or you have a cli or a bash there are different management options we have with the help of that you will be able to connect to the specific data center or you will be able to connect the microsoft cloud infrastructure this something like similar like your console which is available in your dell or it's like any other hardware component right if you want to configure for simple example like uh, if you want to connect if you want to reconfigure your wi-fi router right now in your home you may be using a wi-fi device right you may be having some access point uh, with some antenna right now right now in your home you can able to see there is a wi-fi device is we got from your vendor this is be providing a wifi connection to your old home right there are some situation if you want to reconfigure this wifi you may be connecting to a ip right 192.168.0.1 and username always it will be like admin and admin and you will be configuring wifi access point right similar way in microsoft azure also if you want to configure microsoft azure portal there are different management tools or management options we have typically this is like either microsoft azure portal or it's been like a powershell or a sdk there are different options you have with the help of that you will be able to configure clear any question none so far okay good let's wait for the reply from others also
good so we got an positive feedback from all the members saying that we are able to follow that's good uh, so we am asking and taking this feedback because uh, you are spending your personal or a quality time for understanding the concept so i want or we want the session needs to be fruitful so that the reason uh, in between i'm asking like you are able to come at it because it's a remote training so we will not be able to see you or we will not be in a position to understand what's your feeling or how are you able to follow that the reason we are taking intermediate feedback so let's go back to this concept now right now we understood like uh, so we have a different management tool we have in the last session we understood it's like in a microsoft having a different regions or a data center it's been available across the globe so what is data center is doing in microsoft data center microsoft will have multiple host or the it infrastructure is in place right i'm just i'm just redrawing this diagram so that will be easy for you now i'm thinking like drawing something like this for example like let's take a data center called north europe in the north europe microsoft will have n number of host will be available host is nothing your physical servers so will have host will be available each data center will have n number of host will be available now how host is been working microsoft is using a technology here all the host which been enabled with a virtualization technology so they will have a virtualization technology what is the purpose of a virtualization technology here this is been using for simulating or this is for virtually dividing a resource right clear okay now each service is running with a microsoft azure vt it's called virtualization technology and with the help of that the servers are working now azure uses the virtualization technology in a massive scale across the all the data center in the microsoft now so microsoft is having filled with multiple rack servers and we understood for providing a virtualization technology they will have a hypervisor it's been in place so they will have a hypervisor it's been available so i with the help of a hypervisor microsoft has been it's been configured now each data center right now we are having n number of host and servers is been available right now each data center is been installed with a another component called another software called fabric controller so we'll have a fabric controller is in place so fabric controller is having a kind of a coordinator what is the purpose of a fabric controller so each server in the data center installed with a fabric controller so this fabric controller it's been a kind of a coordinator just to ensure that how many vm is been currently it's been available on the server or is there any resource utilization is been pending or is there any uh, kind of uh, uh, space is been available all this kind of uh, uh, monitoring is been done by the fabric controller so fabric controller is kind of a coordinator now this will have a complete information how much disk space you have how many vms can be able to uh, create on the server is there any space issues we are facing this kind of all monitoring is generally done by the fabric controller now this fabric controller is been connected to another tool called orchestrator you will have another tool called orchestrator it's called orchestrator is the another tool available you don't need to worry about this one okay this is only the theory portion so you are not going to configure or you are not going to touch anything about anything on the fabric controller or a 
orchestrator this all is been managed by the cloud service provider so you don't need to wor worry about worried about uh, how the orchestrator is working or how orchestrator has been working end of the session you need to understand orchestrator has been responsible for all activities is been happening on the microsoft azure side now this orchestrator has been connected to uh, all the management tool through a web web api so you will have a web api has been available so this web a is been connected to orchestrator and the web ab is been connected uh, with all the management tools so you will have a management tool it's been available uh, so this generally uh, you can able to manage or it's it's the orchestrator has been picking the request from a user uh, with the help of api only uh, means if the user will have been working with the microsoft azure portal or a powershell or sdk different tool they may be using now with the help of that uh, it's been connecting your web api and uh, web api will be connecting to a orchestrator and the fabric controller this is the way it's been working i'm just giving a scenario like if i'm a user i want to create a vm so first i will be logging to the microsoft azure portal then i'll submit a request like a create a vm so this request will be picked by the orchestrator with the help of api now once it is done uh, when you are creating a vm or when you are creating any resource you may be mentioning which data center or which region this has been creating right so the orchestrator will be connected to the particular region and inside that region you will have a fabric controller will be available so the request will come here for example like this is a north europe your request has been reached here now give me a second now the fabric controller received a request from an orchestrator now with the help of that uh, orchestrator will be or the fabric controller will work with a hypervisor and it will check is there any space is been available in any of the host and based on that they will create a vm so for example like if you want there is a space is available in the host they will create a vm here so typically the fabric controller and host it's been working together with the help of that it's been working so you will have a vm available it's created with the help of a fabric controller and with the help of a vm with the help of a orchestrator so you'll be having a vm will be created uh, like this so fabric controller is been the person who's been or is the component available in the microsoft azure with the help of that we are creating an option any questions any question on that on this topic so this generally it's been known now we are not going to as a azure administrator or a cloud administrator or architect we are not going to manage anything on a orchestrator side or in the fabric controller side so because the all activities currently we are going to do it's been on the azure portal or azure resource only so the fabric controller or how this resource is been provisioned or it's been decommissioned on the data center it's been typically handled by the cloud service provider so we don't have any much uh, role in on that so this has to be this will be handled by the microsoft um, data center itself so i just thought like i'll share this information because you should know um, how this has been uh, created uh, we got an uh, comment here it's like uh, 
there is some echo has been coming uh, can anyone comment uh, so like others also it's been facing this issue is there any echo issue because i have been connected my additional device here to ensure that there is no audio issues been coming because i'm not hearing any echo issues on my secondary device surag or it's me like anyone can you just comment it on the chat window because i'm not seeing any any echo issues here so can anyone comment it on the chat window um so echo is not there on my end uh, so few people are but hey thank you roy it's been like after uh, after a week yeah i was on a vacation roy it's been that the reason it's like i couldn't deliver this event thank you roy so so glad to meet you back uh, we got a comment it's like what is the different hypervisor it's been using uh, technically in microsoft azure side Uh, generally they are using microsoft hyper v only other cloud service provider may be using vmware exs or it's been like other hypervisors the microsoft side it's been they are using their own product called microsoft hyper v okay now echo issues it's been like um, we got uh, yeah uh glare look like um, i was facing i was using a different headset and that got a noise cancellation everything so i was not able to unmute that the reason i use a secondary uh, additional backup uh, headset now oh, so maybe that the reason uh, noise cancellation facility on that so maybe the the reason some background noise may be coming i'll correct it tomorrow so because the other headset is the the primary one having some issue so technical issue has been phase in between this one thank you gliotso now let's go back to the presentation now right now we understood uh, how azure fabric controller is been working so uh, back end uh, microsoft is using hyper v and the fabric controller and orchestrator this is the kind of a combination they are using and this components are working hand to hand uh, this is general information only for you and you don't need to worry much about that now let's go back to our agenda how we can create this one right right now we are thinking about moving your uh, infrastructure into microsoft azure uh, thinking about like how to migrate or what are the terminologies been available how to configure this one so this is the overall idea about this one now in the morning session or in the first half we understood uh, if you want to use ott or uber or any kind of this kind of a source uh, typically you will be using an account and there is a billing also it's been involved now similar way for microsoft azure also if you know to use any of this resource we understood like microsoft is been providing 100 plus services right and is and can you able to use for integrating your existing on premises solutions or this can be used for upgrading or migrating to a resource into microsoft cloud everything now if i need to use all these microsoft resources i need to have an account to be in place now uh, account can be created in two ways uh, microsoft is saying like if someone is thinking like hey they are planning to migrate or move into microsoft cloud uh, they can they can able to they can able to use two way one it's been like they can go for a pay as you go model or we can go for a free account also there are two mode we can able to use this one
so pay as you go model means this is generally using a production scenario it's been like uh, it's based on the conception you are paying the money into microsoft portal but think from a different angle it's like you are a user you want to um, you want to use uh, you want to evaluate microsoft cloud and then you are thinking like you will migrate into microsoft cloud so you want to ensure that the microsoft cloud is been compatible with the application or it's been compatible with the infrastructure you are using this is the one scenario second one it's been like you have decided your decided like you will learn microsoft azure now you cannot for learning this one you cannot go for a purchasing an account right so microsoft is saying like if someone want to learn microsoft products or azure products or if someone is want to uh, evaluate the microsoft cloud infrastructure or a service microsoft said you can use a free account that got a validity of 30 days 30 days you can be able to use and that will have a value of 200 us dollar so with the 200 us dollar you will be able to create a free account so with the help of a free account you will be able to evaluate all the products so you will be able to install the vm you will be able to install the uh, microsoft uh, storage account or a fire one uh, for a 30 days so this 200 dollar will be created once you are created an account so if you want to create a free account like second option you have a pay as you go model this is one option you have second option is like you can create a free account so you need to just go to microsoft portal and you need to give a couple of informations here one it's been like you need to have a valid microsoft id or gmail id or a github id any of this you need or you need you need a credit card or a debit card also so this credit card and debit card not for charging that's only for a validation purpose so if you want to create any account on the microsoft portal it's mandatory that you need to have a credit card or a debit card so you want microsoft is not going to charge anything from this uh, uh, credit card after 30 days people may be thinking like after 30 days uh, is microsoft is going to charge anything from my credit card no as long as you are not upgrading this upgrade into your pay as you go model microsoft is not going to charge anything from your free account so microsoft is not going to charge anything from a free account so you will have uh, 30 days you can able to use so this credit card or a debit card is using only for a validation purpose So $200 you are getting uh, with the help of that you are able to uh, create a account this have a validity of uh, uh, 30 days now the credit card or a debit card is mandatory and phone number also it's been mandatory so when you are creating this one you need to have a phone number you need to have a credit card or a debit card and uh, we need to have a Microsoft debit card or a credit card and you have a microsoft id also it's been required so with the help of that you will be able to create an account what is the account is being giving it's giving a 200 dollar validity so 200 dollar will be credited to your account so with the help of that you will be able to practice all the resources or you will be able to evaluate or you will be able to do all your labs now whatever configurations we are doing throughout the session you will be able to practice or you will be able to exercise with the help of a free account i'll show you how this can be created now we understood like when you are creating this one i was saying like this is been able to use only for a 30 days now few people maybe got a two questions here now can i use my production servers 
or can i configure a live servers on in this free account i'm just giving a scenario something like uh, uh, with the help of uh, free account uh, robin has been created uh, uh, microsoft dns server for example like in a microsoft dns server i have configured on a free account can i use this server after 30 days i'm giving a scenario it's like you have installed a vm on a microsoft azure cloud with a free account now my question is like can i use this account after 30 days what is your opinion can you just comment it on the chat i'm okay no sound i'm just i'm just asking a question to you that the reason no sound i'm giving a scenario you have configured a dns server on a microsoft azure after 30 days what will happen to this dns server can i use it or no i'm giving a scenario you have created a free account on the microsoft azure with a free account and you have configured a dns or active directory on a microsoft portal my question is after 30 days what will happen to your this server this is my question can you comment it on the chat window the server is off okay the answer we are getting is like one person is saying it's when the server is off let's wait and in the server will be disabled and ask you to pay to continue okay let's let's wait for the answer from others also so post your opinion or post your view like what will happen after 30 days You can use it as long as you need to upgrade it. So it's still gone. Okay, good. This is a different answer we got. I hope you got my question. We created a free account because already we have a $200 is been available. And after 30 days, what will happen? So answer for this one, it's been like uh, 30 days. You can use this server. If your balance is been available on the $200. There are two uh, scenarios is been coming now $200 with the $200 you can create an account. So with the help of that, you can able to use 30 days. Now after 30 days, as Carl is mentioned, like uh, uh, if you want to use this account for a, another couple of years or a month, you need to upgrade your account into pay as you go model because I'm just giving a scenario like a $200 out of this $200, $100 is balance. With this $100, you cannot carry forward to the next month. So you, can, you cannot use DNS server in the next month. So after 30 days, it's mandatory that you need to upgrade your account. In case if you're not upgrading this one, your account and subscription will go in a disable mode so you will not be able to use your service after 30 days i hope it's been clear to you so it's mandatory that in case if anyone has been trying to create a, a production servers on a microsoft azure free account after 30 days it's mandatory that you need to upgrade into a pay as you go model now how to do upgradation we'll have a different session now i'm getting another question 
uh, right now robin has been saying like uh, you have a 200 dollar has been available with us is there any possibility to withdraw this money no you don't have any option to uh, withdraw this money i got a private uh, option private uh, message here asking like hey, is there any possibility to withdraw the money no you don't have any option to withdraw the money uh, this only can be used for uh, uh, creating a resource only now let me give you another scenario you got a 200 dollar now in the day one itself uh, it's mean like uh, uh, after robin session like you decided like hey let me go and practice everything on this uh, uh, microsoft azure in the day one itself you configured a 2 v 20 vm two firewall you configured some nsg rule and uh, your product is mean uh, um, the amount has been got over because you already got only 200 dollar right now you configure all this you spend all this 20 vm or 30 vm in the day two itself here 200 dollar has been over now what will do the next 27 days so 27 days you will not be able to use it because it's like your pocket money your uh, your parents told like a hey, 200 dollar for the whole month now 200 dollar you can spend in the 30 days or in the two days itself you can spend it that's up to you it's really like so two days or 30 days that's up to you in case if the dollar or the um, available credited amount if you're utilizing in two days or three days then you don't have an option you need to upgrade your account that's another point so you need to it's been you need to play within a safe game like if you want to do all the complete lab uh, once the lab is over make sure that you are deleting all the resources or you're uh, removing all the unwanted resources which you are configured it on your azure side now we go to another answer is there any possibility of a grace period no right now there is no grace period concept available here so we we have only option is like a pay as you go model no you you don't have you don't have option for that uh, so uh, account will be in a grace it's been a disabled mode you will not get any uh, option like your credit card like there is some additional chart no we don't have any option the 30th day or the 31st day your account will be in a disabled mode once you are upgraded you can use it back to that that's about the free account now how to create a free account we'll discuss after a break now we'll take a five minutes break after your break we'll show i'll show you how to create a free account so the same lab you can simulate in your computer so that can be used for uh, doing your uh, rest of the labs also so let's take a five minutes break after that we'll see how to create a free account thank you
I hope you are back. If you're back, I request you to confirm through the chat option. So thank you team for your confirmation. So before break, um, we were discussing about the uh, free account creation part, right? So we understood it's like in case if you want to uh, explore or if you want to use Microsoft free account, uh, you can use uh, uh, Microsoft free account feature. Like if you want to use Microsoft Azure portal instead of going directly on the pay as you go model, you can validate with the help of your Microsoft free account. Now, if you want to create this one, it's been pretty much simple. Uh, you need to, you can just go to your Google and just type it's called free account. So I'm just showing here. So you can just give it like a Microsoft free account. Like right now you can able to see in the Google, you will be getting an option called Microsoft free account. So it's been beautifully, it's been explained $200 credit you are getting to your account so with the help of a 200 dollar you will be able to validate or you will be able to use it for 30 days now there are some services it's been available for one year also additional to this 30 days for example like your account has been uh, uh, credit has been over on 200 dollar but there are services been always free for 12 months and there are 40 services has been always free also. If you are uh, scrolling down, you will be able to see here, uh, there are some services, it's been like 12 months, it's been getting completely free. It's been like a uh, uh, Linux mission for 750 hours or a uh, Windows mission for a 750 hours. Uh, you need to remember one more point, even though if you're using a free account or if you're using a free account uh, for you're doing a, some lab or some testing, there is one point always you need to keep in your mind. You will not be able to configure all configurations on the Microsoft Azure. Uh, most probably, this is one of the common concerns we used to get it from the participants saying that, hey, Robin, I have tried to create some X configuration on the Microsoft portal with a free account. I'm not able to get it. The reason it's like with a free account, you are not allowed to create all the configurations and you will not be able to access to all the regions also. Only few regions only this free account can be used and only few set of a configuration only Microsoft is allowing. You're not going to get a complete access or you're not going to allow to create all type of a configuration with a free account, no. There are some limitations we have with an account. So only some countries or some data centers only we can able to use the free account and only some typical configurations only it's been Microsoft is allowing also. So you need to remember these two points. Now, if you're done coming down, uh, you'll be getting all this information about what is the product it's been supported. And there you can able to see there is one FAQ note and link also you can able to see. It's been like a commonly used questions. You will be able to uh, get it from here. It's like uh, this is the commonly used doubts generally we have like uh, whatever few points we already discuss. Uh, this is something like what will happen to my service after 30 days or is there any possibility to download this MO? So there's a common couple of a common questions or it's been like FAQ has been answered here. So that link I have pasted on the chat window. So in your field time, let's go through all these commonly asked questions. Uh, which is me connecting to this uh, free account like what will happen to after 12 months or what is the option for migrating or upgrading this one is there any option for adding some additional money so almost all your uh, common questions or concerns or doubt is been answered on this link so possibly like end of this event uh, spend some time on this faq page so you'll be able to get a complete idea about how it's been configured and how this has been uh, uh, not. So you can just go through this part. So that's about the FAQ part. Now, 
if you're coming to Microsoft account creation, uh, it's very simple. It's you need to just go to the account and give this uh, details here. I'm just giving, if I need to create this one, you can just go for the start free and uh, you need to just click on this uh, start free option. This will take you into a option called uh, giving the basic information. So where you can give your email ID and uh, uh, if already, if you have a Microsoft ID or a Gmail, uh, that details you can able to give it here. In case if you don't have any ID, you can able to type it here. Uh, I think before a break, someone has been asked, like, is there any possibility to access from laptop? Yes, your laptop need a uh, stable internet connection because the configuration which you currently are going to do, or it's been like you're, uh, you're planning to do in the future, nothing's to do with your laptop because laptop is only a mediator and uh, the, whatever browser it's been available on the laptop that you're going to use for connecting to Microsoft Azure one. So there is no, uh, uh conf specific configuration you need it on the laptop no you're not required it is only a mediator for connecting to uh, your microsoft data center so you can do with your laptop also now other question we got in the before a break is there any way to create a free account with a debit card it's not available uh, if yes we have that option that's called assure student account you need to have a college id in case if you're from a college you have option for creating with the help of that. So if you are a student, you can go for that. That's called student account. Uh, student account, it's been giving $100 uh, credit only. It's not allowed. It's not like the other free account because other free account was giving $200. So uh, this account will student account will give $100 worth. So with the help of that, you will be able to practice that. So you can able to go for a assured student account. Now, other questions we got, it's been like, uh, uh, recording link this already discord link has been pasted by Fatima you can use that with the help of that you will be able to see all this uh, presentations or the recordings for the past events grace period already we are discussed so that was the few questions we posted before the break so right now we are discussing like how to create a free account it's very simple you need to go to a google and just type sign in in case if you don't have any account you can go for a create one option you can just click the create one and create a microsoft account or if already if you have you can create it this one you need to just give the email id and password uh, there you need to ask you uh, it will ask you for giving you some details about uh, uh, username and password or a debit card or a credit card detail you can enter it here right now i already have an account so uh, right now i'm not going to do that here so right now if, uh, end of this session you can just give the next to next and you can able to create that account so it's very simple you need to just create an account this is similar like how you're creating your gmail id or how you are creating this id now once the account has been done uh, verification everything you need to do and uh, once the verification is done you will be able to uh, access the microsoft account how to access i will show you that so first lab you need to do it today it's like create a free account with your credit card or a debit card one now this is another um, point i need to uh, share it here because we have a few students here that the reason i will include this one so in case if you are from a student's background or if you're still studying Microsoft has been giving a student's account. So there you need to give you a college ID card and college details. Then you will be able to create a college uh, uh, student's account uh, that got a validity of a 30 days and uh, got a credit limit of $100 also. With the help of that, you will be able to do all uh, free account uh, for you. So with the help of that, you will be able to practice all the labs. Now, this is the... Uh, First lab today you need to do you need this is the first assignment for you create a login to Microsoft Azure portal and uh, create a free account. This is the first lab you need to uh, complete. So these are the few points we are uh, discussed right now. I'm just pasting this details on the chat window. So in case if you want to take a note. So these are the few points right now we are discussed. So I'm just pasted uh, on the chat window. So like a credit card is used for a security purpose. Uh, we have a 200 credit is available uh, so you need to convert it as a subscription service limitation has been like a free of cost and some services are not available with a free account and few regions are also not supported so these are the few points uh, we have discussed so far so if you want you can copy paste this one i just pasted that details on the chat window 
so i hope that information may be useful to you now if you want to create a free account so this is the link for you uh, if you don't have any free card there are another option eric we can use it's been like called assure pass account so there is generally the companies generally will be providing a account called uh, assure pass account so this is called assure microsoft pass so this is the link for that so with the help of that uh, you will be able to create an account it's called generally the few firms used to give this one which having a hundred dollar or a 200 dollar validity with the help of that you will be able to create this one this called assure pass one i just pasted that link also in the bottom one you can use that eric so in case if you don't have any credit card or generally few companies or some trainings and events they used to give assure pass voucher also with the help of a assure pass voucher you will be able to create an account that link have been pasted on the chat window now other information demo already we have seen like while creating this one it will ask you for some puzzles also okay so you need to uh, be clear uh, clear about that now let's go back to uh, Azure portal management so there's the next session before moving that uh, let's have a uh, so these are the two quizzes for you so once you're free complete these uh, two quizzes I just pasted two quiz links. This for your knowledge. So once your event is over, make sure that you are completing this quiz event. Okay, there are two link I have pasted over the chat one. So make sure that you are finishing these two uh, knowledge check or quizzes for you. um we can there are few credit debit card it's been uh, supported uh, uh, so much it's not over the debit card like if you're connected from india it's like hdfc or icc few debit cards have been supported so we need to just check it it's been supported or not so once you're creating this one uh, generally in india there is one rupees is been credited uh, debited for validating this one so few debit card, card only it's been supported in india if you're connected from india so rest of the countries i remember like all debit card and credit card it's been working any other questions so before move, jumping to another code another topic uh what if i don't have any card oh so one option is like you need to go for azure pass otherwise uh, we don't have any option uh, you know, so like uh, you need to have some options like uh, if you're a student go for a student account if you're a professional either you need to have a debit card or a credit card then only you will be able to create a free account otherwise you will not be able to proceed with your lab a pr promo code it's been like on azure pass one right there are some situations like Companies may be giving some voucher or something. That's been considered as a promo code. Any other question from anyone? If you're good, request you to comment it on the chat window.
let's move to the next topic so till now the old discussion was around uh, creating a free account now let's move to the next topic it's called how to purchase an option uh, so in the morning or the first options we understood like this free account can be used only for a 30 days now i'm getting a question after 30 days how will i convert this one into a pay as you go model or a, how will you upgrade this one so most of us maybe got this question in your mind like uh, how to convert or how to upgrade this account so we'll be discussing like how to convert this account that's called a purchasing an option so this topic i'm covering after connecting to the portal one right now all of us maybe not knowing like how to connect to microsoft portal so let's discuss that then we'll come back for uh, discussing a purchasing option now now portal management this is the next topic i'm covering now give me a second let me take that upload that uh, presentation give me a second Give me a second. Let me um, download that. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, uh, uh, you can post it on the chat window. Um, let me upload the next presentation. Just give me a second. I hope you can see the presentation. Purchasing option will will be that's good to know. It's been like uh, you are uh, creating an account. That's a good. Now the next session is about management of your account. Right now we have created an account. Now let's try to understand how to access Microsoft Data Center. So right now we have seen like how to create an account. So what are the options you have? It's been available for creating this one. Now I'm logging off now. Again, no charge until I upgraded to pay as you go mode. Uh, in case, yeah, Angelo, it's been like you created a VM. I'm just giving a scenario. It's like answering to your question now. You created a VM now, and if you are not uh, logging to your v, uh, portal or it's in the Microsoft portal for the next 20 days, there will be a charge that's been uh, uh, happening on the back end. So that charge will be debiting from the $200. After 30 days, if you are not upgrading this one, your account will be disabled. Until unless if you are not upgraded, it will not go to the pay as you go model also. I hope it's been clear now. Uh, Mark, if you can uh, convert that question, uh, uh, I'm not able to under. Uh, can I cancel before the chat? You don't need to cancel it, Angelo. But so like automatically, it will be disabled on the 30th day. So you don't need to go for any kind of a cancellation. This way. automatically or it's been yeah but with this yes you can explore or, or the Azure portals and you will be able to do almost all the labs also so you don't need to go for any pay as you go mode so right now we have seen like how to create an account now in this sessions, we are trying to understand how to connect to Microsoft portal. Right now, we've got an account. Now, if you don't know how to access to Microsoft portal, then you, there is no point of having this one, right? So uh, because you want to see like what are the option it's been available and how this can be able to use it on the Microsoft portal. 
Now, Microsoft Azure portal. Uh, if you want to use Microsoft Azure, uh, there are different management tools that's been available for you. So commonly use Microsoft portal management or it's been like a uh, connectivity option. It's called Microsoft Azure portal. So you can able to use Microsoft Azure portal. This is one of the commonly used admin tool. And if you're good in Microsoft uh, uh, PowerShell or it's been the automation or a scripting, then you can go for a Microsoft PowerShell also. You have a PowerShell option is available. You have Microsoft Azure portal is been available. You have a Azure CLI also is available. And you have some kind of a, a coding kind of option like it's called uh, REST clients. Like if you want to develop or something or if you want to integrate, then you have that kind of SDK files also available. So as a cloud infrastructure admin, uh, we typically use Microsoft Azure portal or a Microsoft Azure PowerShell or a CLI kind of a tool. With the help of that, you will be able to manage or you will be able to do all kind of a configuration or it's all kind of a management. You will be able to do it. Now, Microsoft Azure portal, in case if you want to use this one, uh, you will be using a link. This is the link we have. I'm just pasting this link on the Microsoft this one. So with the help of this portal link, you will be able to connect to Microsoft Data Center. So you will have a browser based uh, tool. So right now you can just copy paste here. So you can able to connect to Microsoft portal. This one is called portal.assureportal.com. So right now, if you're typing this one, it's been generally this has been browser based one. So you can able to use uh, Microsoft uh, uh, this is the using a Microsoft portal when it's a browser based one. So you can use uh, Firefox or it's, you can use Safari or uh, Edge or Internet Explorer or a Chrome. Any of this browser, you can able to use it this one. But typically when you are going for any kind of a uh, activity, uh, this portal will be allowing you to do uh, all kind of a web based uh, management or it's a unified console. So this is the tool you can able to access using a browser and you need an internet connection also. So you can, uh, it will ask you for once you given this link, it will ask you for the username and password. So you can able to use uh, your free account username and password with the help of that, you will be able to log in. It. Or if you already having a, some office a credential, you can use that one. So with the help of that, you will be able to do a build of your resource. You can able to provision, you can able to manage, or you can do all the end to end operations on now in this portal. So you will be able to configure all kind of Azure activities on the Microsoft Azure portal. So right now I have an account has been created here. Uh, so I will have options here. So let me connect it here. One second, look like my ID having some issue. Just give me a second. Let me use an alternate ID. Give me ID. Give me a second. Let me use my another ID. Just give me a second. Look like my ID is having some issues, so I'm just using my one of my colleague ID. Just give me a second. Just taking that. Just give me a second. Waiting for the OTP, just we need to wait a few minutes.
I got the code, so let's wait. So I'm just connecting with the help of my friend ID. Right now, you may be able to see this is being connected to a consolidated uh, single unified console here. So right now, you will be able to see there is a console has been opened. With the help of that, you will be able to do all kind of a management or you'll be able to do all kind of uh, notifications or a build and configurations on Microsoft port. So right now, the ID has been created and you've been connected also. Now, in a normal way, um, if you want to use or if you want to access using a Microsoft Azure portal, uh, there are two methods you can able to use. One it's been like, you can connect with the help of a normal window. This is a normal window, right? So if you are taking any uh, browser, uh, you may be already aware that there is a two mode it's been available, right? One it's been like a normal window mode or second one is known as a, a private mode also. It's called, right? It's called a private mode, right? There's a private browser mode. Generally, you can be able to see in the dot right side dot. If you're clicking here, there is something called Ingenito mode, right? If you're using a browser or uh, Google Chrome, that is known as Ingenito mode, right? So this is a private browser mode. You can use it uh, in a, if you're using a uh, Mozilla that is known as a private browsing mode. Uh, if you're using a Opera or Apple Safari, uh, this private browser mode is known as a Ingenito mode. Also, right? Uh, so and uh, if it is edge also that was known as in private mode so if you're using this mode your browser is not longer will save any kind of a cookies or a username or a password or it won't save any kind of a forms which you filled using a browser also so this is a kind of a um, uh, safety mechanism or a safety option which you can use it whenever you're using a show portal one so in a production scenario I prefer you to go for a incognito mode. So right now you can able to see there is a black color screen or a black color browser window is been opened, right? It's generally known as a private browser mode. So generally you can able to see in the browser right side top in the option, you will be getting an option for selecting this one. Or you have option like there is a couple of a key command also you can able to use. I remember like it's been like if you're using a Firefox, you can press control shift uh, uh, the button P or it is called P for uh, uh, Poland. It's been like a, so you can use it. It's like a control shift P can be used or if it is a Chrome, you can press control shift N or it's like uh, or you can able to go to the right side three dot mode. There are different mode you can able to enable your private browser mode. So right now end of this class you can you can use and you need to understand this is a kind of a browsing mode that won't save any kind of a username or a password or any kind of a cookies or kind of or a forms which you've been used on the browser mode. so these are recommended solutions or these are recommended uh, options we have so once it is connected here uh, you've been navigated into the microsoft azure portal window so you there you can able to see uh, account has been created right now i'm using a uh, my friend id so it's ids you can able to see here there is an account and details it's been given here and you can able to see there is a subscription also it's been created here right now you can able to see there is a subscription is been created now if you want to see this subscription and other detail you have an option called search bar here where you can able to type it's called a subscription right now the account has been created right now you can able to see there is a subscription has been created now you can have a n number of a subscription to be can be created in the account so the basic purpose of a subscription is been like this is basically using for a billing purpose now i have a scenario it's been like i have a multiple department it's been available in my organization um, let me go back to the whiteboard Now you're working for an organization where you have a multiple department. It's been available. For example, like you have a HR, you have a finance, you have IT, you have a marketing session. Now 
you have created an account for your Asho. For example, like you created an account called X. Now all these departments are using different infrastructure component. For example, like if HR may be using a firewall, uh, finance may be using some applications or a database, uh, market is using another set of a component. So as a finance or as an admin, you have a kind of a requirement saying that you need to have a separate billing details to be given to your management. Because right now you think like you have a couple of VM is been configured. For example, like for HR, you are using 100 VM. Uh, now you have another VM is being created for finance. A couple of VM is being created for IT. Right now, if you think a scenario is like you map everything to a single account. Now your management is coming to a kind of a requirement saying that, hey, Robin, we need to know how much amount you're spending for IT infrastructure for HR department. Or what is the operational billing or what is the OPEX cost for finance department? Or let me know what is the CAPEX or it's been OPEX cost for IT department. Now, segregating this one, it's been going to be difficult for us, right? So that's the reason in a normally in an organization, we will be creating a different subscription. You will be creating a different subscription. Only a resource will be mapped to that. So it's a subscription is kind of a, a kind of administrative organizing purpose. We are creating this one. Similar like your OU, like in your olden days, it's like if you have been experienced on an active directory, you may be familiar with a concept called organization unit, right? OU, right? What is the use of OU on the active directory? Typically is using for an administrative purpose only. So similar way here also, if you have a multiple department, it's been available in an organization and you want to do a, a separate billing. And if you want to organize your end of the Azure infrastructure in the account, you can able to go for this one. So with the help of that, you will be able to organize this one. So subscriptions by default, when you create an account, you will have only one subscription only it's been available. But then later on point, you can able to create as it's HR or you can able to configure as a finance or you can have a, uh, another one. It's called um, uh, IT or another one. You can able to create this one. So you will have a different uh, account can be able to create this one with the help of that. You will be able to uh, organize or you can able to do a better administrative task. Right now, when you create an account, right now we have a free account has been created here. So we have a free account has been created. Now let's take it's been like it's been called a free account is called Robin. Now inside that I have one subscription is being created called training. Now whatever resources I have been creating VM or it's been a firewall or a storage or a storage account. Everything will be mapped under this subscription. So the all the billing I will be doing with the help of this subscription. So in case if you want to upgrade, I need to upgrade this building subscription. So this is the way generally this has been working. So uh, subscription use is mean typically using for a billing purpose. Now let's go back to Microsoft portal. Right now the screen you're seeing on in, the, in front of you, this is known as a Microsoft portal window, right? It's called portal layout. So right now you can able to see this is called portal layout, the generally known as Microsoft Azure portal layout. So with the help of this window, you will be able to manage almost all the resources on the Microsoft portal. Now, as I said, it's been like Microsoft has been supporting 100 plus services, right? If you want to get a, all the resources here, in the left side window, you will be able to see there is an option called resource panel. So whatever options which you are seeing on the left side, that is generally known as a resource panel. So right now you are able to see like a home dashboard, all resources, virtual network, right? The entire left panel, whatever options you are seeing here, this is known as resource panel. Uh, sometimes you may be not seeing this resource panel here. The reason it's been like this based on how you're configuring your view on the, your portal. So that generally you will be able to set it from this uh, uh, portal. Right now you can able to see there is a gears kind of a symbol which you can able to see on the right side top. If you're seeing here, here you will be able to see 
or you will be able to configure your uh, appearance what is the type of the mode you want or what is the type of the theme you want and what is the color contrast you want so all this option you will be able to select from here right now i'm selected in a dock mode let's try with an another mode called flyout mode now if you're seeing a flyout mode your window will be something like this you may be not seeing a resource panel which was displayed or which was showing in the past right maybe sometimes if you tried or when you tried to create an a free account or maybe when you log in with your free account your screen may be going to be something like this because it's in a play out mode now if you want uh, all the recently used items or recently or a commonly used resources to be placed on the left side you need to change your appearance into dock mode so you will be able to convert into dock mode and you will be having a different kind of a color combination or a theme options you will be able to select it from here now you if you want you can able to select your language also here so you have option for selecting different languages also here so better select some language which is everyone can able to use it also it's because you made it some la region language and if the rest of the admin if you are they are not able to identify or if they are not able to use it then all organization will be in a kind of a uh, in a trouble so this option you can able to use it here so that's about the setting step so in the setting step you will be able to select or you will be able to see like what are the default directory has been configured now directory uh, we have a detailed discussion during the active directory uh, session like azure active directory or uh, comparing with the on premises active directory we have a different sessions we are planning so that time i will be spending more time on difference between a subscription or a difference between a active directory how the active directory and subscription is been linked to each other how this is been trusting each other so we'll have a separate discussion is in plan right now end of the session you need to understand when you create an active when you create an account by default there is one directory has been created and there is one subscription also it's been created along with that so with the help of a uh, subscription you will be able to do all kind of a billing now in the appearance and startup window uh, you will be able to select the appearance of your uh, portal how what type of portal you want and what type of options you want what is the theme you want this kind of options you will be able to select it from here and language and the region you can able to select based on your which region you are collecting and based on the user profile you will be able to select this one and uh, uh, additional information if you want to set what is your email id and what is the notification you want to send uh, if you want to change the email id or a admin id if you want to set it that kind of option you will be able to select it from here and uh, sign out and notification uh, it's a kind of a preventive option it's like in case if i'm not using my browser or a for laptop for a quite some time uh, what is the action to be uh, performed for example like you want to sign out like if i'm not using my laptop for a uh, five minutes let's shut down or let's um, close this uh, uh, browser window so if you want you can able to set this kind of option the reason it's been like when you created an account you maybe got a global administrator power or typically like admin power now i am logged in my laptop and someone else is been coming and sitting on my seat and making some kind of a modification that may lead to the global outage for your organization so if you're thinking like you don't want to go for uh, this kind of activity and you need to ensure that your id has been secured or your account has been secured and in case if you want to uh, lock it or automatically sign out uh, that kind of option you will be able to select it from here bottom you have some kind of a access to your documentation also like some uh, saved list urls or microsoft documents page or commonly used some reference material you will be able to select you will be able to see it from the bottom side so these all options you will be able to select it from this uh, settings window now left side of that there you can able to see there is a bell icon a bell icon is generally using for uh, uh, getting in notifications if you make any kind of uh, changes on the uh, your uh, microsoft portal all this information will be uh, it's been appeared or it's been it's been selected here so you'll be able to if you're making any kind of modification for example like if you're deleting something or if you're creating or something all kind of notification will be uh, appeared here for example like let me try to create a resource here let me uh, don't worry about how to create a resource 
will have a separate session to be coming. So let me try to create a test or a cluster training or a cloud train. I'm just creating a demo resource just for your understanding. Don't worry about this option central. Okay, we have a separate session has been coming, so nothing to worry. I'm just want to show you how this notification has been working. Now you can able to see the like when I am typing here, there's a red box or a uh, green symbols are coming, right? If everything has been correct, uh, it's you'll be getting a green tick mark. If something has been wrong, you will be getting a red mark also. For example, like I'm just giving a wrong password. I got a message saying that hey, there is some mismatch has been coming. Oh, it's a Robin. So you got the error message has been coming. So if everything has been good and well and good, you'll be getting a green one. So right now I'm just creating one. So this being review is happening. I'm trying to create a VM here. Right now there are some validation mistake happen. Let me virtual machine name I didn't given. I just given it's been VM one. I'm just trying to create it again. Again, there is some validation mistake. What is that? It's been like there is some message. It's been got. It's for like a, just creating this one. Okay. Right now, I just tried for a creating one. Right now, right now, you can able to see in the notification tab. You can able to see there is one pop up game, right? Initializing a deployment right now. You can able to see there is a status has been keep on changing this one, right? So notification area is for uh, for an admin tool. You will be able to see what is the kind of action is been performing on your system. You will be able to see all that kind of a summary is here. Right now you can able to see there is a status has been changing and current status is with deployment in progress. So this kind of information you will be able to see it from here. So if you are clicking here, you'll be able to get a complete consolidated summary also. So right now you can able to see there is action still it's been running here. So notification area, you will be able to see all kind of activities happening on the system. Okay, this is the option you can able to see it here. Now this is applicable when you are trying to delete a resource also. So right now I'm trying to create a VM here. Let's delete also we'll see what is happening on the notification area so let's see that right now the creation is in a progress so we need to wait a minute So deployment is in progress. So we need to wait a minute. What is the difference between AZ900 and this one? Um, I think I have covered this topic on the day one. Um, still, uh, anyway, the VM has been a creation in progress, so I'll take one or two minutes for uh, re-explaining this. So AZ900 has been a kind of a foundation course. Uh, this has been giving a intro of all these kind of a services only. There is not there is a uh, separate lab for that. So AZ104, it's been completely the configuration part. So it's a foundation for all the certification is it 900. So there is no lab for that. It's only the theory session. It's a one day course. Is it 104 has been the complete cloud administrator course program. So this has been covered in the day one. So you can just check the recording. Now, right now, if you can see here, uh, Windows VM has been completed. You may be seen like in the notification area, you got an update saying that, hey, admin, the deployment has been succeeded and uh, you can able to see some details about uh, that VM right saying that the deployment has been created. Uh, there is a um, Windows 10. VM has been created with a resource group 
cloud does. Now, right now you need to understand whenever you are provisioning something or whenever you are making any kind of a configuration change in the notification area, you will be able to see this one. Now, if you want to see a more event, you can able to go to the activity log also. In the activity log, the complete information, the status, which has been happened for this subscription, you will be able to see. So with the help of that, you will be able to do some kind of a root cause analysis also. Because uh, as an admin, there are some situation you may have to end up with a root cause analysis also, right? And so in case if you want to do any kind of RCA or in case if you want to do any kind of a problem investigation, you can able to go for the activity log. So activity log will be giving a complete details like what has happened or it's like is there any errors or is there any kind of a deployment or if there is any configuration changes happened on your system, you will be able to get all the complete information about this one. Right now we have seen about the provisioning part. Now, in case if you are deleting this, you will be able to see this similar kind of notification will be created or the notification will be uh, happening on the your notification area. For example, like if I'm selecting here, so I'm just selected here. I'm just deleting something. You can able to see the same notification area again. It's been pop up also. So there's a pop up has been coming on that saying that there is some deletion is happening right now. You may be notice here. In the notification area, you got that message, right? Right, deleting a resource, right? So this is the one of the troubleshooting tool. As an admin, you can able to use it. Like you will be getting all kind of activities been happening on the system. So end of the session, you can able to understand. So notification area will be getting all kind of a modification or a changes happening on the system. Now. If you're selecting on this a question mark tab here, uh, this is basically using for a, a support and troubleshooting purpose. Now, as an admin, you got some kind of a questions, or if you want to do some kind of help is needed, then you can able to go for this uh, support and troubleshooting or uh, tab. For example, like you want to go for some help from my Microsoft portal or Microsoft technical team, then you can able to uh, go for this. Right now, if you there is a one option is called service health. This basically is been giving a kind of information. If there is any health issue, there's something like a, uh, every month or a, every uh, year we are going for a, a medical checkup, right? So like a health checkup, like you will be checking your uh, heart or liver or the complete body checkup you are doing, right? Similar way here also. If you're opening here, it is giving a consolidated report is there any service issue has been right now is been happening on the Microsoft data center? Is there any region has been affected? Is there any issues being happening? So you'll be getting a report. If there is some issues been happening, for example, like Microsoft is having some storage issues or a storage account is issue has been going on some particular region. So you'll be getting a pop up here. Saying that Swansea region, hey, admin, there is some issues been going. Because I'm just giving a scenario. It's been like uh, you configured a storage in a uh, North Europe and North Europe. You may be having a uh, some storage issues been going. Now, if you want to, this may be affecting your end user or a client user, right? So if you as an admin, you you have to be updated with all these kind of activities or kind of a issues ongoing outages also. So with the help of that, you can able to plan your availability or you can plan, you can inform your client and you can work on your DR plan also. So if you want to get any kind of a service or a service health issue, you can able to use this tab. So this will be giving a complete detail. Now you can able to define your scope, how you want to define this one. You want to get a details about all, all the regions. So all the data center information you want, you can select it from here. Or if you're thinking like, hey, I need to only the information about the production servers, which has been hosted in the Norway region or in Gata Central or a Sweden or a Switzerland only for a particular data center only if you need, you can able to do that kind of a filtering. Or if you're thinking like, no, I don't need all kind of alert. I need only the alert which has been coming only for the my Microsoft Azure networking part. So you will be able to sell it all that kind of options here. What is the type of the services alert you want to get it to your email ID? So you have an option for 
setting that kind of alert also see here there is in the top you have an option for selecting alert so it's been getting a notification if you are selecting here you will be able to select what is the type of the subscription you want which region alert you want what type of events you want for example like if you want own kind of a planned maintenance or a security or a health all this kind of alert or a service issue you will be able to select it from here so typically as a preventive action or as a admin you maybe have to select this option for example like microsoft is doing some kind of a planned maintenance uh, so if you want to get that kind of information or a security advice or health history or a resource or kind of a health alert all this kind of information you will be able to get it from this uh, service health so this typically this is as a admin uh, this window or this tool will be help you for planning your activity or you will be able to monitor your service which is been hosted on the microsoft different data centers now the same tab it's giving a couple of other additional informations also there is some microsoft documentation pages also you will be able to set from here like you have access to microsoft community also so this is basically microsoft documentation page so this is a free page you don't need to pay anything for this all kind of documentation access microsoft is giving here from here you will be able to identify or you will be able to read or you will be able to um, able to get all the configuration information everything from the microsoft community support page you don't need to pay anything additional for that it's been free of course you are getting this one so this all documentation page link you will be able to get it from here now there is one more option is called help and support help and support is basically you can use it uh, for example like you configured some service or a uh, resources on the microsoft page or a microsoft portal and you have need some kind of a technical help uh, then that kind of a situation you can go for a help and support page so this typically like you want to create a service request or if you want to get some kind of a help from a microsoft Uh, rather than connecting through microsoft portal you can able to create a support request here now when you going for a microsoft support this one one option is like from the question tab you can able to select the help and support or in the left side window in the resource panel you may be able to see there is a option called uh, um, help and support window right now so you can see in the help and support there is an option called help and support window in the resource panel so from here also you will be able to select or you will be able to take into this microsoft portal for example like you need some support from my microsoft one you can create a support request saying that i need some uh, i'm facing some kind of a problem here and you can able to select is it related to billing or it's been related to a technical or a subscription you will be able to select it this one so from here you will be able to select for example like i'm facing some billing related issues so you can able to select which subscription you are facing and what is the uh, summary of your issue and what is the problem time you can able to create a support request directly from the microsoft portal now coming on the microsoft plan uh, basically microsoft has been supporting uh, four types of a plans it's called a basic plan developer plan and a standard plan and a professional direct and you will be able to see uh, what is the kind of a feature it's been supported on uh, each plan also so when you create a free account by default this is be created with a basic plan so basic plan means that you will be able to create a service request but uh, there are some situation like i have configured a vm and the vm there is some outage is going on there is some technical issues i'm facing so if you are thinking like hey i need to connect to microsoft expert i need to uh, in a verbally or in a voice or in a call i need to speak to him so i need some kind of additional helping hand if you i need from a microsoft support team i need to change my plan to developer or a standard or a professional connect uh, now if you are taking a basic plan basic is been supported only for the documentation page you will not have any technical support over the call so you will not have any kind of a additional support you will be getting from the microsoft one for example like if you are going for a professional connect you will have unlimited support and uh, if you are creating a ticket in a severity a or a b or a c within one hour microsoft expert or a critical incident manager will be connecting with you saying that hey what is the problem robin 
how can we assist so they will be assigning a subject matter expert they will be joining your team score or webex score and with the help of that we will be able to sort out the issue so if you want to go for a additional help or additional support plan you need to move or you need to upgrade your subscription to that particular plan so there is to be some charge and price is been tagged for that it's not that it's not a free of cost so if you want some additional support or a premium support this one you need to convert your plan into either into standard or a professional direct one so in case if you are using azure on in your uh, production scenario make sure that you have subscribed for a additional technical plan so with the help of that you will be able to get some support from them so right now there is a green tick mark you are seeing on the screen that saying that robin right now the plan you have been opted is been a basic plan so now in the case if you want to upgrade this one you have an option for upgrade one so you have option for like upgrading to uh, upgrade plan so in additional amount need to be purchased for that so there is additional amount or there is additional charge is been so it's been occurring for that so you need to go upgrade based on your customer or the client requirement you need to upgrade your plan to the different one so end of this session you need to understand microsoft has been supporting for supporting plan with the help of that you will be able to upgrade your account now that's about the um, um, support plan so when you are doing a lab uh, you will be able to go for this help and support page now right now surag has been shared a tomorrow's uh, session link uh, uh, like how to join this one so you can able to use that link for joining this one now tomorrow we'll be moving to the vm portion and uh, we'll be seeing like how to use a powershell also surag uh, so we are pausing uh, day 2 here because uh, next session is been about the configuration one surag you are the yes yes so the old day we discuss about creating an account and we have seen like how to access this also so the first lab for you to for today it's been like create in free account today and uh, because tomorrow onwards we have a uh, old labs are coming so uh, for practicing or simulating this one you need an account also so i'm just posting uh, here for taking a question uh you have any question related to the creating an account or any anything about the topic which you already we have covered let's have a discussion in case if you're good i request everyone to comment it on the chat window yeah nina this has been uploaded on the discord link uh it's already fatima and uh, Surag has been commented on the chat window. You can just scroll up. You will be able to see the link. If you're good, I request you to comment it on the chat window. If you are able to, um, yeah. So, uh, Lepana, you can just uh, type it a Google free account. Just you can just type it on the chat uh, in the Google. You will be able to uh, get a link. So, in case if you miss this one, this is the link for that. you can use this link one second you can just type it like a free account and there's a link you can use so this is the link you can use 
is there any automatic backup feature has been announced? No, there is no by default. There is no automatic backup that you need to go for a backup as a service or it's your responsibility to configure a backup one. By default, there is no backup has been enabled here. So you may, either you need to have any kind of availability mechanism or you need to uh, subscribe as a backup as a service. Is it on back, backup is not there by default. So copy or you can have any other kind of options we can do like a VM availability set or a VM availability zone kind of things we can able to uh, follow. It's been on the Discord channel link. You can use that. So all purpose of this event, it's been like we are trying to enable you or to use the Microsoft Azure. So that's the reason we are in the scratch level we are doing the session. So we want all the resources to be able to use Azure one. We are trying to make your foundation is strong and uh, uh, the concept also it's been clear. So once it is done, you will be able to move to a DevOps side or you'll be able to move to a networking side on the cloud or in the architect side. So thank you team. Uh, it was a nice day. It's been, it's been like uh, uh, we started uh, creating an account. So morning tomorrow, it will be moving to uh, the creation part. So thank you, team. Have a nice week and talk to you tomorrow. Take care. So we are stopping the record and connect you tomorrow.